Well, the last time we visited with Martin Short, there was a Tucson desert behind him. This time around, a blank wall and some ferns. Yeah, well, are you coming are like down better? in life or up? Which <laughs> I guess down, yeah, ferns sound better. You glad to get out from under those sombreros and the heat, though? They were heavy sombreros, yes. I tell you, yeah. They looked like they weighed about 20 pounds of heat. <laughs> Something like that. This time around, you have just supermarket garb, which I guess is nothing special. We're out of the desert now. We're into a real world right. for a while. <laughs> Speculation on a show like this is fun. If you could go into the bloodstream of a good buddy, where would you go? Yeah. Pick a target. What do you think? I don't know. It's amazing uh, effect seeing uh, the screening last night and, and really seeing to the extent, because I hadn't seen the whole film uh, to that amount. And uh, the, the, the work is really quite remarkable that ILM has done. So you're saying it was like seeing the movie for the first time? Yeah, you know, you'd I'd, seen, I'd seen a lot of it, but not with all the effects. Mm -hmm. Including stuff with your face, where you're going <laughs> in and out of uh, different facial right. structures. Do they right. have stuff inside your cheeks pumping them out? Or? No, no, it's uh, just uh, done with air pumps. <laughs> it's true. Sounds real uncomfortable, Mark. Uh, no, it actually was, uh, it was just uh, strange. It was just, you know, just before, uh, below the camera lens, there was a little air pump. And you know, <laughs> And how many takes did you have to endure that? Oh, 39. Good heavens. <laughs> was that in your contract? No, no. Well, you have a kind of a mobile face anyway, and I guess that's part of the gag, isn't it? You're, you can do things with your face. Yeah, very rubbery, good. they call it. Yeah. <laughs> now, what kind of an advantage has that ever been or a disadvantage in your career? Uh, I, I don't think it's ever a disadvantage. It's always been an advantage, especially when I was doing SCTV and Saturday Night Live because I could do more impersonations or characters and really change. Mm -hmm my face from one person to another. And I guess for the record too, just what is the substance that you used on your hair so Ed Grimley's hair could stick up <laughs> at a point like oh, that? Oh, there was a little bit of everything, you know, <laughs> soft soap, dippity do, guts, you know. First time I saw that character, it was just a fully formed, immediately recognizable type, I guess. I mean, but you had worked it out for a long time before you brought well, it. Well, I'd done it on, uh, in, on Second City Stage in Toronto mm -hmm. some years before, and then I hadn't done it for a while, and then I brought it. Uh, to SCTV. Was there ever a moment when your audiences, especially at first, just didn't know what to make of this guy? M most of <laughs> my career, they <laughs> wondered why anyone would be that desperate for a laugh. Yeah. Let's just touch all the bases with some of these characters. I was looking at the notes that apparently Snoopy and Johnny Appleseed are also two of yours. <laughs> yeah. Is there a kind of quality in you that gravitates towards roles as unique as that? I don't know. I mean, there's certainly interesting roles. I did Johnny Appleseed for a Showtime. My friend uh, Christopher Guest was directing mm -hmm. uh, and he asked Rob Reiner and I to do it and, and that was like totally this kind of charming script for Shelley Duvall. Mm -hmm. Snoopy I did in, in, in the 70s in Toronto. That's a great show. In view of that kind of background, I'm wondering what kind of roles in the future might beckon in which you take on maybe comic heroes, cultural heroes, aspects of things like that for the movies. Yeah, I, you know, I, there's nothing really that uh, that I eliminate. Uh, finding a good script is so rare that you're, you're willing to do anything that's well written. Mm -hmm. I guess I wouldn't want to play a, uh, glorify a rat in any way, unless it was meant to glorify and then ultimately show that he was a rat. That's interesting so, because even in your most, quote, malicious portrayals, there's always a sweetness there. I don't care if it's the sleazy lawyer or your character here, you'd never really intend anybody any harm, do you? Well, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of sad to really the idea of let's really get somebody, you know, mm -hmm. it seems kind of, you know, for a laugh and make them feel ha rotten for a month. Have them. you seen but examples of comedy that's gone too far in that direction? Oh, sure, yeah. On the stage especially? Yeah, maybe. stage and television where you just kind of say, gee, I bet that person, that's kind of mean, I think. And I, I don't know. Have you, have you ever had a target in any of your own comedy routines that's come back at you and you've thought, I went too far? Uh, no, not really, because I, if, you know, some people will feel that something's gone too far, and, and I won't necessarily agree with them. Some people are more uh, sensitive uh, to uh, satire than they should be. If you're in the public eye to a degree, you're open for satire, as long as it's done with some sort of uh, uh, grace. If it's just arbitrarily mm -hmm. mean and uh, spirited, then... Uh, but I, I, I don't think I fall into that. When you're working out your characters, what's your best friend? A mirror, maybe? How, um, do, you, how do you bounce these things off? Probably uh, uh, my wife, Nancy, because she, strange enough, does still laughs, you know, so uh, she's the best person to run the vibe. If she doesn't laugh, I drop them. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Meantime, in the picture, inner space, 
it's a bittersweet love. We can't say too much more, I guess, but that's the kind of role that I think maybe means you've arrived in the movies, in case there was any doubts about it, right? That's a strong pull to have a love affair that's bittersweet. Yeah, I, 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 I like that. The last scenes, tell us about that. That's kind of heart-tugging. Well, it is, it is this interesting kind of love story, you know. A, a miniaturized astronaut is in my body. He directs me toward his uh, girlfriend for help, and I fall in love with the girlfriend. So it's up to me to save his life, and yet, in a way, I wish he'd just go to Timbuktu because mm -hmm. I, I'm in love with her. So uh, there's that kind of odd triangle. I don't know that I've ever seen a love story quite like that. And again, it's hard not to tell the ending. I, I know. Guess. But so we I'm not can't. quite sure how to, how to deal with that. Why don't we talk about what's coming up next for you? You're very busy these days. Your property is, your stock is high, as they say. Uh, Are you in a position I love that expression. Where Especially when choose? people say it's high. I hate, it when they, <laughs> well, I hate when you've crashed. Yeah. Can you choose now? Are you at that point? Um, I suppose t to a degree. Uh, it's always degrees, you know. I mean, uh, there are many actors who can choose more than I, but... Uh, I can choose more than some, I mm -hmm. suppose. But ultimately, it is, it's very hard to find something that's worthwhile to do, that says something or is well-written. It's usually the writing and uh, finding a good director. You Are know. you one of those comedians, comics, whose heart always yearns for a completely serious role? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not driven toward that. I, Steve Martin said a funny thing in an interview when asked if he wanted to play Shakespeare, and he said, I don't know if, if the public is that dying to see Steve stretch. And uh, I'll do uh, Rustan.